What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. In this episode, I will finally be picking my best 22 slash 23 for season uh, 2023. Let's get into it. Now, this is going to be hard. It's going to be hard. I'm thankful I'm not a selector. Uh, we saw pretty much our best 22 against um, Sydney. I'll be making a few tweaks to that. We brought in a lot of new players, of course. You know, you got Tom Mitchell, Dan McStay, Billy Frampton, and of course, Bobby Hill. Saw a couple of players go out, Ollie Henry and um, Brody Grundy, but they weren't in that best 22 in the prelim. So, look, this is what I think how... I don't know if it's going to be how round one would line up, but this is how... I would choose our round one lineup, barring no injuries. Uh, this is just a clean slate. This is what I would go with. Some of these picks are going to be pay based on potential and how I think they're going to go in the preseason. But without further ado, let's get into it. I am using Zero Hangers website. So this is, uh, if you go to, I'll put the link down below, zerohanger.com slash AFL slash pick hyphen your hyphen team backslash. Uh, it'll come up to this. You pick your team and now you've got a field where you've got all the uh, Collingwood players lined up. So we'll start with the back pocket. This one kind of picks itself already. Braden Maynard, uh, it's in alphabetical order. Braden Maynard right there in the back pocket. That one, you know, I love Maynard when he runs through the middle. He'll probably get a run through, I dare say, throughout the season as well. Um, we're seeing doing a lot of um, training for that. Yeah, I'd love to see him go through the middle a little bit more. But, you know, uh, if he can start in the center, you know, like he was doing last season, starts in the center uh, for the start of the quarters and stuff like that, kind of rips through the opposition. Yeah, like I would love to see that, but with Tom Mitchell, you don't think that sort of happens. So Braden Maynard back pocket, of course. The other back pocket, we're going to go with Jeremy Howe. No one could really replace him at the moment. Yes, I keep saying that he's not a good one-on-one -on -one defender, but aerially, he is just insane. We know this. Um, obviously, can take a good grab. He's a very good kick. He uh, assists us going forward, you know, sets up those plays. Um, so, you know, the transition football with, from Jeremy Howe is second to none. Um, so Jeremy Howe is going to be in the other back pocket. Now, full back. This is a position that we don't really have. Uh, we had Jordan Ruffett, and I loved Ruffy, that big sort of body, and then we didn't have him. We, we, we were using um, Nathan Murphy, Darcy Moore, Jeremy Howe to play on the big body players, Charlie Curnow, Tom Hawkins, you know, Jeremy Cameron, Lance Franklin, etc., etc. We've recruited now, full on. I'm going to put in Billy Frampton. Where is he? Billy Frampton as my full back. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, but he was playing SA NFL, hasn't got good numbers. Uh... This is third club and stuff like that. Like, yeah, right? And at the start of the video, I said that this is going to be based on a lot of potential. He's a big body. I think he's about 200 or so centimeters. Um, I think Justin Lepage is going to work wonders with him. He's just that big body defender that we need. I don't want to be wasting our good uh, uh, rebounding defenders on a big stay-at-home forward. So Billy Frampton, he's in my best 22. He, he, that's, that's what I'm going with. That's what I'm going with. Now, halfback. I'm going to start on this halfback. I'm going to start Jack Crisp. We know he's been playing a lot, like Braden Maynard, playing a lot more midfield. But again, I don't think we need him in the midfield just yet. Yes, they can change up uh, throughout the game and stuff like that. But I've got Jack Crisp uh, starting in that uh, on that halfback line. Center halfback. Come on, this is just... Do you need a... Oops, not Daniel McStay. Although he could play center halfback if we needed him to. Uh, Darcy Moore. Australian centre half back. Um, there's not much else to say. Darcy, I absolutely love Darcy, captain of the football club, or the next captain of the football club for me, in my eyes. Uh, Darcy Moore is probably the one of the first picked on the team sheet. Um, I just love the way he goes about it. I just love the way he goes about it. So he's going to be uh, there. Now, this second half back is a little bit interesting because it can go a lot of ways. Um, there's a lot of players that we can put in there. We can put Isaac Quaynor, we can put Johnny Noble, Nick Dacos, Scott Pendlebury even. I'm going to start with, um, on the field, I'm going to start with Isaac Quaynor, um, Q, just because uh, he does, you know, I want that counter attack. That's what, that's this team's, team's goal is that sort of counter attacking football. You could have put Johnny Noble in there as well, but I've got um, IQ in there. He rebounds off the, uh, off the 50. Uh, he's a good small uh, defender. That's why I've got him starting uh, in the halfback line. Now, the wings, steel side bottom, has just gone to another level. Has just gone to an absolute um, 
another level this season. I thought he was done and dusted. I thought we saw the best of Steele uh, and then we saw the worst of him and that was it. But this season, he just proved me wrong. He probably could go for another two or three years, hopefully three, four, four years. But um, he just kept getting better this season and I loved everything uh, about him and the way he went about it. So he's going to be on the wing. On the opposite wing, we're going to go with Joshy Dacos because uh, he had a, a, I think he was up until finals, he was the highest rated wingman in the AFL, or at one point he was the highest rated wingman uh, in the AFL for that pure wingman uh, position. So Josh Dacos, he's finally found his uh, groove in the team, which we love. Uh, he, he lost it a little bit last year uh, with Buckley and, and, and under Harvey, but he, he's got in the back and he's going to be on that wing for me. Now, the center, pretty easy here. Jordan Dugowie, um He's going to have a huge season. I'm, I'm tipping him already for a very early prediction for all Australian. Uh, uh, that's what I'm even if it's uh, all Australian, maybe the top uh, all Australian forty or whatever that uh, squad is. I've got Jordan Dugowie there. Yes, he does very good work in the forward line, but him and Jamie, Jamie Elliott can swap a little bit. Uh, we've seen that throughout the season. If we need Jordan to kick goals, he'll kick goals. But um, you know, I'd rather ha him have seven clearances um, than kind of waste away in that forward line when we have a, uh, a lot of good forwards. Um, just looking at this as well, oh, this is going to be difficult. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take out Jack Crisp from there, and this is going to change throughout this video. I'm going to take out Jack Crisp, and I'm going to put in Nick Dacos on that half-back line. Now, I would like Nick Dacos in the midfield, but I think the midfield's pretty stacked at the moment. So I'm going to put Nick Dacos on the half-back line. We'll move Jack Crisp uh, around a little bit, but Nick Dacos... Best first-year player that I've ever seen uh, in all my time watching football and 30 years of, of watching football. Uh, thankfully, he's playing on our team. Um, but he was just a revelation. He was a revelation. I'm surprised he didn't finish top five in our best and fairest. But, you know, rising star uh, player. He could have been All-Australian. I don't know why he didn't even get picked in the squad because he was he had that phenomenal uh, of a season. And he can only get better. you got to remember that he suffered through COVID for two years in Victoria where he might have only played a handful of games. So... You know, this is his first preseason, first game against, uh, first year against bigger bodies. He's only going to get better. Imagine another preseason under his belt. He's going to go to new heights and probably will push for a more midfield position, maybe swapping with uh, Scott Penelbury uh, as that half back. Now, uh, half forward line. Here, I'm going to put in Bo McCreary. Now, Bo, he's tackling pressure second to none. He doesn't. He can get four touches of the ball. That's all I care. But if he's getting, you know, six, seven tackles inside fifty, that forward pressure, the the one percenters. That's why Bo's in the team because he epitomizes that side by side. That you know, that wearing those black and white stripes. He is. He is Collingwood. Bo McCreary. He's just a mongrel, and we absolutely love that. And on that half uh, forward line, probably taking Will Hoskinelli's position. But on that half forward line. Um, he goes up and down the ground. We can see that he can sprint. He can go down back, uh, you know, further up the ground if he needs to, and then run down. We saw that, uh, what was that game? Was it against Geelong, maybe, where he just sprinted? Or should have took a shot? Oh, no, it might have been against Carlton. Sprinted all the way down the wing. Uh, was in two minds whether to take the shot or not. Um, but Bo McCreary is going to be there in, in the half-forward line. I don't really want to put him in the forward pocket because I need his, um, his presence around the ground. Center half-forward. So... This is going to be, look, so center half forward, oh man, it's it's either it's either uh, McStay or it's Brody Majacek. I guess those two can interchange. I'm going to put Daniel McStay here for now, um, and then we'll, we'll chuck, we may as well just chuck him now because it seems we're going to talk about him. We'll chuck Brody Majacek in uh, as the full forward. Now, these guys don't classify still as big bodied full forwards like, Tom Hawkins and stuff like that. But I think Dan McStay does a lot of good for our team because Brody Majacek has been batted from pillar to post since his debut in 2018. He's been getting the first or even, yeah, probably the first or second best defender every single game. And he is just batted, beaten, and bruised. Like you saw, he might have had a hip injury going through the season. After the halfway, the halfway point, he just wasn't himself. So um, Dan McStay, you know, they can interchange. I don't really know. That's, that's yeah, McStay can probably go because Brody Majek likes to wander up um, up the ground a little bit more. So, you know, you could even put, let's put Brody, uh, we have to change these around a little bit. Let's put McStay as our um, full forward. 
and we'll put Majacek here, just because Majacek does love to roam up the ground uh, a little bit as well. But like I said, um, those can change a lot. Now, this other half forward line, who can we put here? Now, look, it could be um, a lot of players. I'm going to placeholder this as, um, well, not really placeholder it, but I'm going to put Pat Lipinski as, as that um, other half forward. I told you that there's going to be a lot of players where it's going to be hard to squeeze him into, um, but that's because I'm going uh, down the list like that. Once we get into our sort of followers and stuff like that, we'll start narrowing it down. But Patrick Lipinski, coming from the Doggies, he does a lot right as a half forward. Um, we know that he can sneak in um, a couple of goals. Yes, he, he's that uh, sort of that, that midfielder that we want as well. But that half forward gives him a bit of bit of time to roam around and stuff. I just, I don't think Will Hoskin Elliott gets a lot of games. And, you know, you're probably applauding that because um, there's been a, a lot of talk about uh, Will Hoskin Elliott. But um, so I'm not going to put him in, in there just for now. So Lipinski probably stays there, but we'll use him as a placeholder. These other two forward pockets, they just, they literally just pick themselves. Jamie Elliott and Jack Ginevan. There he is, Jack Ginevan. There's not really much to say about these two guys. Uh, Elliott, it just goes, keeps going to another level. And, and Ginevan reminds me of a young Alan Didak, or, or not even young Alan Didak, just Alan Didak in general. Has that flair, has that um, smuggery, smuggery, is that a word? But he has that smuggery about him. Um, and yeah, he's just the mainstay in that in that forward line now. Uh, and you know, you you hope I keep saying that they'll go to a next level, but you do hope that everyone goes to the next level. Give puts a little bit more um, sort of football knowledge in their repertoire. He's someone that we haven't had in that in that forward line uh, for a very very long time. A genuine sort of crummer. And Bobby Hill is a genuine sort of crummer as well. So you could probably chuck him in there at, at one point. But that's how I'm lining up. So now our followers. This one's easy. Darcy Cameron. I don't think Mason Cox gets a game next season or a lot of games next season. He wasn't supposed to get a lot of games this season until Brody Grundy went down and Aiden Begg didn't really work out. So Mason Cox hap so happened to trigger a, a, um, a contract uh, through dual clause. So I don't see him getting games. I see Darcy Cameron getting a lot of games. And then I see him swapping with uh, Daniel McStay uh, as our Ruckman, probably a 70-30 sort of split, kind of like what him and Cox were doing anyway. Our followers, we're going to put, um, oh God, I told you, this is going to be hard. We're going to put Taylor Adams and we're going to put um, Tommy Mitchell. Now you're probably thinking, Luke, you, you've missed someone super, 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 super important. And I have. I really, really have. I've missed Scott Pendlebury. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. Only because... There is just too many bloody players. Obviously, Scott Penry is going to get in. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put Scott Penry on the half back line. I'm going to chuck in um, Quainor on the bench. Scott Penry on uh, as the half back line. I just don't see him at the moment. There's a lot in the midfield. I don't see him pushing into the midfield too much. They played him off the half back a lot. Um, you could probably, especially with Tom Mitchell coming in as well. Um, he does obviously Scott Pendlebury is going to get into the midfield. He he he's like a fine wine. We keep saying it. This was another one of his season best uh, careers, um, to our season best years. Sorry of his career, but if we put him on the half back line, uh, God, this is so hard. I'm so glad I am not in the selection committee. Obviously Scott Pendlebury is going to be one of the first picks. I can't believe I kind of kind of forgot him. Um, uh, but yeah, so Scott Penny around the half back, Nick Dacos on, on the other half back, IQ on the bench. That's fine. These guys only stay out for like five minutes, ten minutes, and they come off and they swap anyway. So, you know, best 22 on the bench or, or not, you're still on the field. So now we'll look at our bench. We've got Isaac Quainos, so he covers that sort of half back depth. Jack Crisp covers that um, half back depth as well. Crisp, he starts on the field uh, all the time. So this. It's just it's just so hard. It's just so hard to pick um, who starts on the field, even though everyone's going to start, you know, be on the field anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Um, we, we might tweak it a little bit, but we got Jack Crisp there. Uh, another guy that I absolutely love, 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 love. It's either Ashley Johnson or Nathan Kruger. 
I don't think we're going to go too tall. I think it'll be one of those two guys. Just based on what we've seen, I'm going to go with Ash Johnson as that forward cover. As our fourth sub, I'm going to put in Nathan Murphy. And then if I had a fifth sub, you could... Or you could almost go John Noble as that as that fifth sub or that or Nathan Murphy as a medical sub, uh, etc. But what throws a little bit of a spanner in the works is the addition of Tom Mitchell. Now look, you don't really what you could probably do is you could put in um, Patrick Lipinski on the bench, chuck in Jack Crisp, maybe push a Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> See how hard it is. See how absolutely hard it is. And I'm ready for you guys to sound off in the comments against me because that's totally fine. Because you need Jack Crisp on the field. You need Jack Crisp. He has to start on the field. Okay. Here's what we're gonna do. We'll just get these out for a second. So we're gonna put Lip we'll put Lipinski in um, as the sub. We're gonna put Jack Crisp here while we figure out what we're going to do. Um, Scott Penabry in there. Tom Mitchell, Taylor Adams, Darcy Cameron, Steele, Nick Dacos. Maynard, How, Frampton. Frampton throws another. We're putting in three of our new players, so we have to take out three from the prelim. And the thing is, when you put in, in my team, you've got three new players in, right? In that prelim, there is, you know, Brody Grady didn't play and Ollie Henry didn't play. So it's not like it's a like for like. The only player that I've dropped from the prelim is, I think, Will Hoskin Elliott. Everyone else from that prelim is pretty much playing now, I think, except for Nathan Creer because he was the, the sub. And uh, uh, Mason Cox as well. But look, Jack Crisp in the half forward line, that obviously is not going to work. But just to get everyone um, on the field, that's probably what I'm going to have to do. Um, just to get Jack Crisp on the field, stuff in the half forward, and then, you know, push in. You know, he probably swaps with a, a Josh Dacos, maybe, um, or a Jordan Goey. But that is a very, very, very hard task. I have tried my best. Oh, that's hard. That is real. Oh my God, that is really, really hard. Uh, I implore you, please, to try it out. Let me know your best 22. Um, I'm going to make tweaks. I'll probably revisit this in a few months' time uh, at the start of uh, next year. I'll do another video. But as of now, as of 20, uh, November 2022, this is my best 22 slash 23, because remember, we've got Johnny Noble in there as well, for season 2023. It was hard. Let me know your thoughts down below, what you think, what changes you would make, and I'd love to see what your teams are down below. But until then, like, comment, subscribe, tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets, and I'll see you next time. Double shackers. I'll soup you later.